Now let's go over some practical tips for Napoleon Hill's principle seven, which is decision making. A key to success is being a good decision maker, but how do you get there? The idea is very often well planned, but not perfectly planned action is the right way to go. Don't be an overachiever in planning. Don't make the perfect, absolute perfect plan that will be a sign that you've waited to decide too long. It's okay to make mistakes in your plan if the mistakes you make are reversible. As an example, I made some image changes for the cover of my courses and then some of them worked and some of them didn't work, but not beating around the bush and making it live I was able to gather feedback and data and see, oh, like, are people clicking on it? Are people buying? Did they make a positive or negative change? Some images made a positive change. I left them. Great. Great decision. The images that made a negative impact, mistaken ones, I did take a little bit of a loss, but then I realized, oh, that's a mistake. And I reverted back to the previous images and I learned from my mistakes and I made better ones. So long term, across the board, I made better images because I gathered data of what was working, what was not working, and I made images that were working. But I had to make those small errors because anytime you're making decisions, you're never going to have 100% correctness. There's just no human that exists like that. So you can't be afraid to make mistakes. That's part of the game. Small mistakes are okay, but you've got to prevent the big ones by making a lot of little tests. And today in business, for a lot of things, the barrier to entry is very low and it's easy. And I've commonly mentioned that in, in my videos. So it's okay to make small mistakes as long as you try. I had a client just yesterday and I was thinking about making this video as I was talking to her and she's in a situation where she's a first time entrepreneur trying to sell a product on Amazon and she just hasn't been sure for a long time, like it's six months or so and hasn't even started because she was unsure how to do it. And so that's a fantastic example of over planning, overthinking without eventually doing. She was smart. She knew a lot of the strategies. She just didn't piece it together. But a lot of the piecing together comes from hard doing. You can't figure out everything in theory while planning. And sometimes things worsen and harder and harden over time, which is another and that woman, my client, she's a fantastic example because guess what? Every day on Amazon, or she was trying to do a business on Amazon, every day on Amazon, things get more competitive. So every day she waits, her competitors are growing and the gap between her and them is growing and it makes her work harder. So sometimes things just don't stagnate. Things actually worsen without a good decision or any decision. And lastly, I want to mention in the end, would you be proud of your decision? Is it ethical? Is it something long term? When you look back, would you be proud of yourself if you kind of judge yourself in front of yourself? It doesn't play into the outcome. You might make an unethical decision, but still get a good outcome. But at the end of the day, you're the one who has to live with that long term. So that's another thing that's good to consider. Now, I also want to introduce you to this decision making strategy that a lot of leadership programs use or management programs use. And this is called the Eisenhower box. So let's look, let's take a look at what the Eisenhower box is. This is the Eisenhower box. You see, it's broken down into four quadrants. And if you need to make a decision, what should you do? So it's not a decision like, do I get into a business or do I not get into a business? It's different kinds of decisions, but it's also very good to use this because at least it gives some structure to the decision-making process. On the top left, you see things that are important and urgent. So important and urgent, you do them first priority. And things that are not urgent, but it's still important. You do them second priority. So the things that are important, urgent, not urgent, you get them out of the way first. And notice quadrant number four, you have to eliminate some things. It's not about doing everything. It's about what should you prioritize right now? Equally important is what you should throw away because there's a lot of things you can throw away and you'll immediately have less stress, have more time, Things like that will happen to you and that less stress, more time, you'll be able to make better decisions, have less stress and function better with everything. And of course, number three are things you do that are still left over that aren't important. So you see importance on the left, everything that's important. And how do you decide what's important? Important, recall principle one, the things that get you closer to your goals, that's important. Everything else, not that important. You see, decisions can be easy if you just don't obsess over them and don't overthink them. Remember the idea of it's good to plan, 
but do not make an absolutely perfect plan. If you've made an absolutely perfect plan, you've probably waited a little too long. Now, with only one caveat, unless you're extremely experienced in your field. If you're extremely experienced in your field or you're working with somebody like a coach who is extremely experienced in their field, you don't have to over plan. You can create a perfect plan quickly because you'll have a very good deep grasp of the subject matter. This is why I often recommend getting coaches who are very, very good because they can help you create a very good plan very quickly.